In this video, we're going to apply the GPS method on Luke chapter 12, verses 15 to 21. That's the well-known passage of the rich fool, the parable of the rich fool. So in the GPS method, we've seen that we live in the 21st century and there are many differences between us and the people of the Bible, differences of language, time and history. And we need to overcome those differences and the GPS method teaches us that we go through three major steps. The first one is understanding. That takes us to the message to the original receiver. And if we determine the message to the original receiver, we ask the question, is that message applicable or not? And if it is applicable, we communicate it in the 21st century. So let us begin with the first process of understanding, and we're going to apply that on Luke 12, verses 15 to 21. To get to the message to the original receiver, and we've seen in the other videos that we use the acronym of START. This is situation, the T is the type of literature. Three, we analyze the passage, and after we've done that, we relate the message to the rest of the Bible. And just to make 100% sure that we're on the right track, we test our findings. So let us begin with situation, the first, the S of start. So in the passage, you know, actually it's not always um, difficult to determine the situation. In this case, it's very easy. You just read the passage and the passage will give you the answer. Well, the passage tells you that Jesus was teaching a large crowd and suddenly someone in the back calls out and interrupts the whole group with a question about his legal affairs. That guy was a bit selfish, you know. But Jesus responded with a parable and used this situation of this individual to minister to the crowd um, about the right attitude towards possessions and greed. And then the next one is the type of literature. We know that in any language we get prose and poetry, and the Bible is also written in prose and poetry. And in this case, we will realize it's a narrative, and narratives can be divided in stories, allegories, history, etc. And in this case, it's a story. So we have prose, it's a narrative, and it comes to us as a story. And because we know that, we know how to analyze stories. How do we do that? We know that stories are divided in episodes, and an episode is just a chain of events that are related, having the same location, time, and major participants. And then secondly, we determine the plot structure and main themes. The plot is just the way the story develops and serves to keep our interest, otherwise it's boring, so there, there will be a tension line, it draws you into the story, a relief of tension and Many times there will be a result. And while we're doing that, we just determine the plot structure, uh, sorry, the main theme. And after that, we try to conclude and summarize the message to the original receiver. So we know that Luke 12, verse 15 to 21 is actually one episode. So we know that because it's the same um, people, location, and time. And now we're going to determine the plot structure as well as the main themes. So let's start by reading from verse 16. And he told them this parable. The ground of a cer certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Actually, good problem. So this is a problem. He don't have enough space. So the tension is, the rich man's harvest is too large for his barn. So what is he going to do about it? Verse 18. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. So this is how he wants to relieve the tension in his life. He builds bigger barns and... Take life easy. And then what's the result? But God said to him, You fool! This very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for himself, but is not rich towards God. So this is the result. God thinks he is a fool. So we have determined the plot structure. And also the main themes, the harvest is too large, 
result build bigger bones and <laughs> God doesn't think he is very wise he's actually a fool and we will see um, why now we only need to do number three we need to conclude and summarize the message to the original receiver and we need to reread the passage maybe over and over because in a story the message is not explicit but it's always implied so I think you know the message can be you know you can add many things as well but I got the following message out of this God considers you foolish when you are greedy and when money becomes your significance why why did I come to that conclusion you know when you read the passage you will see that he's actually very selfish he's using um, constantly the um, referred to himself as my and I and he didn't realize that he only had control over his belongings he didn't have control over his life now we go to number four just to make sure that we are on the right track we relate this to the rest of the Bible and I just want to show you that it does relate Ecclesiastes 5 verse 10 says whoever loves money never has enough whoever loves loves wealth is never satisfied with their income this too is meaningless Ecclesiastes 5 verse 10 and then Matthew chapter 6 treasures in heaven do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there your heart will be also and then the passage just continues about the right attitude towards money and then Proverbs 22 some wisdom a good name is more desirable than great riches to be esteemed is better than silver or gold so you can see I've just took three passages from the Bible but it relates that if money is your significance you are in trouble God thinks you're a fool now we just test our findings and that concludes the start of the process of understanding and I promise you when you read Bible commentaries or study Bibles they will be very close to what I've concluded God considers you foolish when you're greedy and when money becomes your significance and this brings us to the next step of application and in this step we determine whether the message to the original receiver is incidental or whether it is essential when it's essential we know it's applicable in all times when it's incidental it was only applicable to them because it's, if it's cultural ceremonial or civil it's not applicable to us so when you read this passage you realize in all circumstances in all cultures this is true you when <clears throat> when you are greedy and money becomes your significance you will trample on other people therefore God will consider you fully so this is an essential therefore we can communicate this message in the 21st century and you can apply this message in the 21st century on a small group a Bible study group and um, before we do that I just want to read something from um, an excerpt from hearing God's tweet a devotional on page 144 it's about the parable of the rich fool just want to read the devotion part I once asked a friend of mine what he would like his life to look like in 10 years time he was actually my roommate in my dormitory at university well his answer was short and sweet I want to be retired and on every golf, co golf course in the world this section in Luke also describes dreams of eating drinking and living the good life this successful man in Jesus parable enlarged his barns and pursued his dreams this was very noble yet God considered him a fool but why there are three distinct reasons why God called him a fool he was selfish as he constantly referred to my and I he thought he had control of his life but when God demanded his life verse 20 he discovered that he merely had control over his belongings he wanted to organize his own life but without God the words in verse 18 this is what I'll do and those in verse 19 I'll say to myself are proof of this 
it's not not wrong to have goals. God just wants us to have the right attitude and not be greedy. Because life is not made up of how much a person has, verse 15, but rather how much you are willing to share. And then there is the quote, Complete possession is proved only by giving. All you are unable to give possesses you. So in the light of this, you can answer the following questions. You can just pause this video. And if you are in a group setting, you can just focus on these five questions. You can also go to my website www.free-biblestudy.com for more information and you will also have access to the two devotion books I wrote Hearing God's Tweet, What is God Doing All Day Long and the Bible as your GPS.